Hey guys, and welcome back to another Check It Out Before You Buy It with me, Brad Fitzpatrick. And this time we're actually playing a free game that I got on Steam called Dissolving. It's uh, supposed to be a free horror game. Um, so, I mean, I just, you know, sort of picked it up to see how it's going to be. I still visit my ex-boyfriend. Right. He used to be a total bore, but he was cute and good-hearted. Always ready to put off his plans to help friends. Always willing to advise, he used to speak passionately about programming. Before long, this good guy had to go. There's only bore left sitting in front of a screen. He didn't finish his fourth university year and soon he left his job in the office. His online work lasted a bit longer, but in the end, he abandoned that as well. He dwells in a decrepit flat in a bad neighborhood, a generous gift from his parents. They're quite rich, so I guess it's not a problem. That's how he lives, alone. No job, no friends, no interests, only endless arguments with people on the net. Well, I'm not really sure if they're even people or not. How else can anyone be stuck there for that long? It's possible he's been desperately arguing with bots, algorithms, simulating neural networks. All in all, I felt a kind of responsibility for his situation. Some time ago, I decided to be close to him. Funny, I don't hold on to the past, but to my decisions. The last time I was there, he was staring at his screen. Even more languid, pale, and thin than usual. Sometimes it seemed like his routine was starting to blur. Just like a ghost. A rough sketch on the fabric of reality, he was unusually nice when having a free moment from his screen. Even gave me an envelope containing cash for my birthday, which was last month. The sum was quite significant, and the best explanation from him was a shrug of his shoulders. Ugh. Nothing. Just found my thing. It's been over a month since then. I'm here visiting him again. The same elevator, still out of service. The same stairs. The same music in my headphones. Dim and deep, yet beautiful doom metal. A great fit for this old hall. He replied okay to my messages about visiting. I pressed the doorbell. It takes some strength, like the bell hasn't been used for some time. Nothing. He's not home? It's a weird shirt. Weird. I can't imagine him being outside. Was that him? Again? I'm coming over in two hours, okay? Yeah. Come in. The door's open. Wait. In the living room. Busy. ATM. What? He didn't forget how to walk, did he? There was a certain SP episode. Suddenly I'm not too keen to come inside. I pull the handle. The door opens, heavily and creaking. The hall isn't lit. The doors to the living room and kitchen are open. I can see in the dark that his bedroom door, wooden with no glass parts, is shut tight. I hit the switch. I was afraid his power had been cut, but the light comes on, revealing the floor covered in dust balls. Silly me. He lives online, of course. He plays for the electricity. I take off my shoes and into the living room. Silence. There's no light com coming from under his bedroom door. Instinctively, I reach for the switch and hit it. The fixture flickers as the light comes on. It seems I still remember where things are here. The dust is more noticeable under the light. I'm glad he doesn't have any plants. They would have withered a long time ago. Wait, I don't recall this lock on the door. It's easily, it's easily seen under this light. Looks like the newest thing in here. I couldn't have entered even if I wanted to. Somehow, I'm not too crazy about this. Sorry, not going outside. Let's talk like this. Great. Just great. I saw a situation like this in a movie. It didn't end well. Fine, I'll reply. Why aren't you coming out? You won't like how I look. Don't want to frighten you. Really? Because you already failed. What's wrong? Is there something I shouldn't see? Haven't showered or had a haircut for some time. My lifestyle's had an impact on my body. Flesh is weak. <laughs> I can't decide if I want to run or argue. I told him his solitude to drive him mad. His messages seem to have been stolen from poorly written songs. Wait, you never listen to music. Stop. Why don't you want to talk normally? Can't you move your tongue? Uh, I'm glad you came. I left you a gift as thanks. The white envelope on the drawer. Please take it. 
There's a gift and a note. If you take a look at the drawer by the wall. The envelope is there. The only thing not covered in dust. Is it money again? I don't like this. Should I just go? No. I want to know what's going on. Maybe there's someone else in his room. Or no one at all. It's not grounds to call the police yet. But he's been so strange these last few years. You could have easily gone mad. It could be dangerous. No. I can't leave. I can't abandon him like this. But I'll grab a knife just in case. And try to coax him out of his room. I quietly enter the kitchen typing a message. Why didn't you... You didn't answer my question. Why are you being like this? His reply comes as I pick up a knife. Even the kitchen looks abandoned. I haven't spoken to anyone for a long time. I feel uneasy. There's no going back now. I have the knife behind my back. Okay, let's do it this way. If you come out, I'll take the envelope. Deal, but take the envelope first. If you do, I'll come out. I don't want to take it, but when he comes out, he'll see the envelope is still there. I could hide it somewhere, but that's risky. Gosh, just take the stupid envelope. It's just cash, that's all. I put the envelope in my bag, holding the knife in my other hand. Not very convenient. I have it. Fine, but don't say I didn't warn you. Well, surprise me. Bum, bum, bum. And st still nothing? I step back. Oh! The knife falls out of my hand. I hear a mechanical voice. I told you you wouldn't like it. I start to back away. He stands there in the doorway. The longer I look, the more blurred his outline is, and the clearer his mouth and eyes are. I turn and run. As I leave the apartment, I glance back. I only see his mouth and a pair of eyes. Whoa. I don't remember returning home. I must have immediately fallen asleep. That's how my body manages stress. In dreams of full of anxiety, I saw eyes and a mouth, not a body. It was probably too much for me. Because I don't usually dream. It's been a day since I visited my ex, or the thing in his apartment. What was it? A prank? Did somebody put, put on a silly mask with a lightning trick? Was I hallucinating? Or... Damn. I don't know how to approach this. Or what to do. I don't know how to carry on. When such things happen, I want to huddle up in a corner. This is why I tend to act impulsively, just to avoid anxiety. Perhaps my future actions will be just as impulsive. I used to believe that it's better to know. In these situations, it's best to start with a conversation. What happened yesterday? The answer came immediately. I'm glad you texted me. Have you opened the envelope? What a douchebag. Don't change the subject. I don't know what to say. Think harder then. Okay, what happened to your body? Why is it taking so long? This is the side effect of the ascension. The hell are you talking about? What ascension? Where? I've been in a ton of arguments online. I met someone there. We started a mutually prof profitable partnership. I provide them with food, and in return, they help me transform and solve some issues. They will probably reach out to you soon. They enjoyed our chat. Uh, well then. <laughs> what do you mean? What the hell? I want to show my gratitude. You didn't leave me. I'm thankful for my parents, too. They probably didn't care, but my family was still giving me money as support. And when they found me, my financial issues were solved. The envelope is the smallest thing I could do for you. I wish you a good ascension as well. Believe in the net. What the fudge? You're not leaving, are you? There was no reply. I'm talking to you. There was no reply. A couple of weeks have passed. Hello? What? How? I see. So the funeral is this Saturday night. I will come. Goodbye. I didn't say sorry to anyone. His mother's voice was so stoic, I was afraid even a formal condolence would be inappropriate. It didn't seem like it came as a surprise to her. I know how she feels. Even that prank or whatever it was is now easier to understand. He wanted to have some fun at the end. He decided long ago that there was nothing to lose. Left a death note and found a place to die, just like a cat. Of course, there's a chance he ran away and the faded body found in the dump near his house was not him. But to him, 
suicide was his was his escape. He lost the ability to be around other people, unless it's somehow related to that dull job he was refer re referencing ever so vaguely. Ugh. Perhaps I need to pay my respect and see what he put in the farewell envelope. In all honesty, I put it away because of a reminder of that creepy scene. In my mind, the story with Max is over. I can, with no heavy emotion troubling me, delve into the mystery. That sense of completion enab enables me to come detach. Perhaps there'll be even some nostalgia. I take the envelope from the drawer. The glued paper is easy to open. It's as if it's been waiting for me. Some fresh 500 pound notes and a piece of white paper. Last time, it was only money, and a considerably smaller sum at that. I turn the paper over. There's some text on the back, and below it, a SIM card. Of course, this doesn't bode well, but what's the worst that can happen? Conveniently, I have a free slot for a SIM card. It's okay if something... It's okay if something bad happens to my phone. I was going to get a new one anyway. Well... C'est la vie. I removed the SIM card from paper and put it in my phone. The provider is displayed as eFoodNet. Could be some sort of viral marketing. Was it them he worked for? I try star 100 pound. Weird. Nothing bad so far. Whatever then. I put the phone and money away. I go on my PC to scroll through my Twitter feed and find materials for work. Well, mostly to check Twitter. Oh. Suddenly, I receive an IM from my ex. Glad you opened the envelope. With the SIM card, the process will be much quicker. What? That's not funny. The SIM card must have triggered his final prank. A message from a dead ex-boyfriend. A sick joke. This will make a great tweet, although I usually avoid writing about my personal life. None, nevertheless, the world needs to see this masterpiece. Just got a message from a dead ex-boyfriend. A sick joke. I wasn't wrong. The tweet soon went viral. I forgot what kinds of people reply to tweets. That joke is stolen. XDDD, come and see such an attention whore. Picks or it didn't happen. What another geek girl. You're not impressing anyone, my dear. Try harder. You're so F FKN dumb. You must be a femme. Nice stories about a dead ex. We live in a society. It's nothing new, but somehow this got to me. Especially mouthful of Dark's tweet, which drove me up the wall. What alternative logic led you to believe I'm a femme? Who else would joke about men dying? We must have gone complete bonkers. Several hours passed and I barely noticed. New people were joining the argument. New misconceptions and new re misrepresentations. New white knights and trolls. I know it was a stupid waste of time, but it really was hard to stop. Another opponent will bite the dust under some celebratory cheers of the crowd. Is this how gladiators felt too? Not sure about gladiators, but this must be what my ex felt. People argue with strangers to get the slightest semblance of feeling. Writing terrible insults to get the smallest reaction. Joy, nice. Oh, look at the screen. I didn't notice that. Eternal life. Freedom from physical needs. Sleep, food, excrement. They are no longer required. Join. Believe in the net. In this world, we only exist on the net. But we rule the net. This is our kingdom. We can give you anything on the net. We create money, change databases, rewrite history. We can change the world order if we want to. You will be one of us. We only need food in return. Your emotions. Those sweet, spicy, bitter things that you pour onto the net. That you create on the net. Out of thin air. Out of nothing. Something red Russian. Wasting our life on emotions made of nothing. Going into the void. Abandon your mortal body. And live eternally on the net. We only need emotions in return. That you create. Your body will gradually dissolve. And when you join our domain, shed your flesh. Leave it to rot. We see potential in you. 
We see potential in you. There's something else in Russian. Believe in the net. We are not evil. We are just different. Join us. Eternal life. I wonder how long this loops. Freedom from physical needs. Yep. A validation of their achievements. I don't like the idea of becoming that. On the other hand, you'll need to take it in moderation. Online communication. Whatever anyone says can help you offline. You can learn good lessons. And it's also interesting to compare people online and in real life. Then it has... Uh, net has. It has one's essence, I would say. All that remains is text devoid of imitation. Text only representation of thoughts and feelings. That's what I find interesting about it. But still... Stop. What is this? Bloody hell! I jump away from the screen and plug the PC. What the devil? I try to catch a glimpse of my reflection. I scream. Ah! I run to the phone and take out the SIM. Throw it on the floor and crush it. I put the remnants with some paper in a cup and set it on fire. It smells terrible, but I don't care. There are only ashes left. I throw them in the trash duct. I get rid of my PC along with all its data. I start collecting what materials from scratch on a new PC. I wanted to throw the money away, but I'd rather donate it to the church. The next day, my reflection was back to normal. A day completely offline. But after a few months, I think I'm ready to return to Twitter. I even created a new account. My endless song. After everything that happened, I know this is silly, but I miss talking to you, Virtuals. I miss having a place to share my thoughts and get feedback. In the end, I forced myself to go to the funeral. A sight as pitiful as his last years. Not sure if I'm going to visit my ex-grave. Okay, I did. You didn't click on the monitor. Was I was I supposed to? I guess. Hey, I guess that's the. Uh, I guess that's a, a ending. End of the first scenario. Oh, there are multiple scenarios. Interesting. What is this? I. I do anything. Huh. Alright, so I guess there are multiple scenarios. Well then, well then guys, I'm going to go ahead and leave this here. A little short and sweet little text adventure. Uh, but it's pretty interesting. But alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. I may do some of the other scenarios and see how it goes. But until then, always be kind to each other and I will see you in the next video.